Monday morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hello to and welcome to Family Marriage Monday. We're so glad that you're with us and I know that you will be blessed. I want you to know that um, we have checked out a couple of books um, that are awesome books and I actually got this from us, Sister Brenda and Brother Lionel. They will actually be coming to you probably for our next two uh, Family and Marriage Mondays, the two following this. They will be doing the devotion for you. Um, but I, they actually told me about the power of a praying wife and praying husband and praying parent by Stormy O'Meriton. And so my husband and I have looked at those books. And so today uh, we are going to be bringing you some information from that book. And we're even going to be praying prayers that are from the book. Those books are powerful and I suggest that you get them. Um, it's power of a praying husband, power of a praying wife, and power of a praying parent. And they also have another book uh, called Power of a, Pray of a Praying Parent of Adult Children. So for you who have adult children, go ahead and get that book. I'm very close to that, so I've already gotten the book myself. Thank God mine are still under my roof. So you will be hearing us pray prayers from that book. Um, again, if you need more information, contact me and we will give that to you. Right now, my husband is going to uh, read some scriptures, and then we're going to be praying. I want to encourage you that it's important that as parents and as a father, that you take that kingdom authority uh, over your marriage, over your home, and over your children. And that's what we want to encourage you and to lead you in and guide you, how important it is as a parent, those in authority, to come and declare the word of the Lord over your family. We're going to begin with Matthew chapter 19. 5 and 6. And it reads, And he said, This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. And in James chapter 5, verse 16, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. I, I wanted to let us know today that it is so important between a husband and a wife yes. that we can trust each other. Did you hear that? That we can trust each other because no one is perfect, but the only one that is perfect is the God that has put us together. So it's important that I as a husband, even though I'm not perfect, even though I may falter, that I'm able to trust my wife and, and to tell her, uh, Sherry, babe, honey, we need to pray. I need you to pray with me. Let, let us agree together because when that happens, I find healing. Then our marriage finds healing and our home finds healing. There is nothing more powerful than a husband praying for a wife or a wife praying for a husband because it says the two shall be one. You're no longer two, but you're one. So we are for each other. We want each other to succeed because when one of us is not succeeding, we're both not succeeding because we're no longer two, but we're one. So there's no, no greater prayer. There's no greater power where two agree touching anything. Remember the word of God where there is unity, there is power. And there's nothing greater than a mother and a father or in some cases, there's not both. There is nothing greater than a parent praying over and for their children. So we are going to do that today. You know, there's a power between two becoming one. Because what happens between a husband and a wife is there's a covenant that come together. What that means is in that covenant that we both die to ourselves. We die to our wants and our desires. Now we look to God to lead us and guide us. Now we look at each other to serve God faithfully, together, and not apart. So it's important as we come to this place, that as a husband, that we begin to pray, but pray in power. So as I pray, I want you to listen, to hear. I want you to get this leading of the Holy Spirit, of what God can do when we allow God to lead us and guide us through the power of prayer. And husbands, as my husband is praying, he is praying for Sherry. So you might hear him insert the name Sherry, but you insert the name of your wife. As he is praying over me, you pray over your wife. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. 
Show me where my attitude and thoughts are not what you would have them to be, especially toward my wife. Convict me when I am being unforgiving. Help me to let go of any anger so that confusion will not have a place in my mind. If there is behavior in me that needs to change, Father, enable me to, to make changes that last. Whatever you reveal to me, I will confess to you as sin. Make me a man after your own heart. Lord, enable me to be the head of my home and family that you created me to be. Lord, show me how to really cover Sherry in prayer. Enable me to dwell with her with understanding and give honor to her so that my prayers will not be hindered. Father, renew our love for one another. Father, heal any wounds that have caused a rift between us. Give me patience. Give me understanding. Give me compassion. Father, help me to be loving, tender-hearted, and courteous to her, just as you asked me in your word. Enable me to love her the way that you do. Lord, I pray that you would bring Sherry and me to a new place of unity with one another. Make us be of the same mind. Show me what I need to do in order to make that come out and make it come about. Give me words that heal, not wound. Fill my heart with your love so that what overflows through my speech will be words that will build up Sherry, not tear her down. Convict my heart. Very important. Holy Spirit, convict my heart when I don't live your way. Help me to be the man and husband and father that you want me to be in Jesus' name, I pray. And we say, Amen. Okay, and now I am going to be praying for my husband, John. Of course, John is my husband. So ladies, fill in the blank as you pray for your spouse. Lord, help me to be a good wife. I realize that I do not have what it takes to be one without your help. Take my selfishness, impatience, and irritability and turn them into kindness, long-suffering, and the will willingness to bear all things. Take my old emotional habits, mindsets, automatic reactions, rude assumptions, and self-protective stance and make me patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-control. Take the hardness of my heart and break down the walls with your battering ram of revelation. Give me a new heart and work in me your love, joy, and peace, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I am not able to rise above who I am at this moment. Only you can transform me. Show me where there is sin in my heart, especially regarding my husband. I confess the times I have been unloving, critical, angry, resentful, disrespectful, or unforgiving toward John. Help me to put aside any hurt, anger, or disappointment I feel and forgive him the way you do, totally and completely, no looking back. Make me a tool. Make me a tool, Lord God. Of, make me a tool of reconciliation, of peace, and healing yes. in this marriage. Hallelujah. Enable us to communicate well and rescue us from the threshold of separation where the realities of divorce begin. Make me my husband's helpmate, companion, champion, friend, and support. Help me to create a peaceful, restful place for him to come home to. Teach me how to take care of myself and stay attractive to him. Grow me into a creative and confident woman who is rich in mind, soul, and spirit. Make me the kind of woman he can be proud to say is his wife. I lay all my expectations at your cross. I release my husband from the burden of fulfilling me in areas where I should be looking to you. Help me to accept him the way he is and not to try to change him. 
I realize that in some areas he may never change, but at the same time, I release him in the name of Jesus to change in ways I never thought he could. I leave any changing that needs to be done in your hands, God, fully accepting that neither of us are perfect and never will be. Only you, Lord, are perfect, and I look to you to perfect us. Teach me how to pray for my husband and make my prayers a true language of love. Where love has died, create new love between us. Show me what unconditional love really is and how to communicate it in a way he can clearly perceive it. Bring unity between us so that we can agree about everything. Amos 3.3 3. May the God of patience and comfort grant us to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus. That's Romans 15.5 Make us a team, not pursuing separate competitive or independent lives, but working together, overlooking each other's faults and weaknesses for the greater good of our marriage. Help us to pursue the things, help us to pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one, which one can edify another. Romans 14, 19. May we be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. I pray that our commitment to you and to one another will grow stronger and more passionately every day. Enable him to be the head of the home as you made him to be and show me how to support and respect him as he rises to the place of leadership. Help me to understand his dreams and see things from his perspective. Reveal to me what he wants and needs and show me potential problems before they arise. Breathe your life into our marriage. God, breathe your life into our marriage. Make me a, a new person, Lord. Give me a fresh perspective, a positive outlook, and a renewed relationship with the man you have blessed me with. Help me see him with new eyes, new appreciation, new love, new compassion, and new acceptance. Give my husband a new wife, and Lord, let that new wife be me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, I want to encourage you that as a husband and wife, allow each other to be an encouragement. Allow each other to pray over each other. Strengthen each other in the words of God and the words of prayer each and every day. Allow each other to lift each other up and be an encouragement. Now, as we are together as husband and wife, we also have wonderful children. And as parents, it's very vital and important that you and I learn as a husband and a wife how to pray over our children. In the book of Psalm 127, verse 3, children are a yes. gift from the Lord. Yes, they, are. they are a reward from Him. Hallelujah. I know what you're saying. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I understand. Reality is reality. But the Word is the Word. They are a gift and they are our reward. And what an honor and a privilege as a parent, as a father, that I can come tonight and share with you, I will pray and then my wife will pray. Why? Because together, God has given them to us for a time to raise them up in the things of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for Josh and Tori. Now listen, what you will learn to do is put your children's name in there if you have children, that you will pray for them. But as you hear me pray, I'm praying for my son and my daughter. Lord. And if you don't have children, go ahead and sow the seeds of prayer right hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. If you, if you are hoping to have children and you do not have children, go ahead and sow the seeds of prayer at this time. Begin to exercise the strength of being someone that we're Whatever or however it will come to you, whether it's through marriage, adoption, whatever. There's so many situations that, that adults receive children. And I want you to be encouraged that God can give you the grace and the power to be a blessing over the seeds of the kingdom. So let us pray. Lord, I pray for Josh and Tori to have a heart to follow you. Work in them so that she, they will be continually drawn towards you. Silence the enemy, attempting to pull them into worldly yes. thoughts to wor and worldly attitudes yes. and worldly actions that are opposed to your will and your ways. 
Help them to hear your voice. Keep them far from the confusion of the world so that they can make right decisions and clear choices that are pleasing to you. Father, prevent every infringement of the enemy from finding an openness in their heart. Strengthen them to resist peer pressure that would draw them into anything that does not honor you. Help me and our other family members to love them in a way that clearly represents your love to them. Grow in her that sense of your presence, in him that sense of your presence, and love them so they will never want to stray from it. God, show us where our children need to be so that they can thrive and achieve your destiny for their lives. Show us if we should make a change of any kind. I pray that no plan of the enemy will succeed yes. in Jesus' name Amen. in drawing them away from you. Yes. If the enemy has gained any ground That's in their mind works. through TV, the internet, music, other people, or anything else, I pray you would sever it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Sever that enticement and break all attraction for the world in the name of Jesus, that name above every other name. Protect them from bullies and other abusers. Hide them in the shadow yes. of your wings from such dangers. Reveal any bad influences. I claim Joshua and Victoria for your plans and purposes only. Again, I claim Joshua and Victoria for your plans and purposes only. In the name that is above every name, in Jesus' name, we pray and we both say, Amen. Amen. Well, you have a great Monday and join us tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. We love you.